people are frustrated and it's no wonder. Tiffany Hinyard is out there prancing around town like she's done nothing wrong and like she's untouchable. It's infuriating to watch, but trust me, that confidence won't last forever. The feds are like hungry birds eyeing worms when the time is right. They'll swoop in and snatch her up before she can even see it coming. So where are the feds? Well, you know, here's another analogy. Think of the feds like a seasoned chess player. At first, you know, it looks like they're shuffling pieces around the board, taking their time, maybe even a bit too cautious. You know, you start to wonder if they even know what they're doing. But then, just when you think they're slow or out of moves, they make that decisive play and suddenly it's checkmate. You know, the feds, they don't rush y'all. They're setting up the board and when they finally move, it's game over. I mean, the truth is no one really likes the feds and everyone is frustrated by the wait. You know, wondering why there hasn't been an arrest or an indictment yet. But here's the thing, guys. When it comes to the feds, taking their time is simply a part of the strategy. They don't rush in because they're busy making sure that every piece of the puzzle is in place. Now, the FBI's goal isn't just to make headlines. It's to secure convictions, and that requires a methodical, you know, almost surgical approach. Now, here's my opinion. The delay is more of a sign, a sign that they're building a rock solid case against her, you know, one that's nearly impossible to tear apart in court. And what's likely next? Well, once they've gotten everything lined up, we could see a shift, a decisive move, a move that means serious trouble for Tiffany Hinyard. And you know, the FBI is not in the game to play. They're in it to win it, and a lot of their promotions and accolades are tied to these convictions. So guys, this is what we'll do. We'll take a deep dive into the probabilities surrounding Tiffany Henyard's future. Will she be convicted or will she somehow escape the clutches of justice? Now, we'll be exploring the serious crimes she's been accused of, and then we'll compare them to other high-profile mayors who ended up in federal prison and, of course, those who got a slap on the wrist. Now, contrary to Tiffany's opinion, she is facing serious accusations, misuse of public funds, corruption, possible involvement in pay-to-play schemes, commingling funds, retaliation, corruption, obstruction, and lack of transparency, and a whole bunch of other stuff that we probably don't even know about. But here's what we do know, that these types of charges are kinds that have brought down mayors before her. And if the evidence holds up, she could be looking at significant legal trouble and significant prison time. As you know, um, for the record, everything that we say here today is all alleged. It's my personal opinion, um, critique, and criticisms based on information that's public knowledge and public records. So we know that mayors in similar situations have not fared well. There is about a 90% slam dunk rate against mayors with these types of allegations similar to hers. That's because the FBI is on the case and there's so much evidence, in my opinion, stacked against her. So I personally think there is a 90% or higher you know, probability that she'll be convicted and get serious prison time. But just remember guys, it's not over yet. There's still, and there will always be that remote chance that a person, and in this particular scenario, her could avoid serious punishment or serious prison time. If she has a strong legal defense team, which I personally don't think she has, they may be 
um, popular for representing certain, you know, people accused of certain criminal acts. But I don't know that I believe that their success rate is anything to brag about. So there's other things to consider with her case. And largely, I think it's going to um, be something similar to blaming other people, such as, you know, her former senior administrator, Keith Freeman. They've already put it out there where, oh, you know, she didn't know this was her first term in office and he was supposed to be the person that was expert with numbers and money and so on and so forth. They've already put that out there. Um, so we never know about this remote chance, but my opinion is she's definitely going to get some time, um, whether it would be significant time into the teens, you know, 15, 20 years or something like that. I don't know if, if I agree with that, but I do think she's probably going to get at least seven to 10 years. <gasps> I know you guys are clutching your pearls and grabbing your ties, but I'm going to tell you something, guys. I've seen cases like this, you know, not go as the public had anticipated. So I think that she's definitely going to get somewhere around 10 years, right? Seven to 10. So while it's more likely that she will face conviction, it's not a done deal yet, guys. It's simply just not a done deal yet. So let's talk about it. So let's look at some of the more serious allegations, right? In no particular order, obstruction like potentially blocking investigations, hiding evidence, preventing FOIA requests, public records requests from moving forward. You know, when the news is mainly WGN news made a public records request, a FOIA request for information, you know, they're looking at, you know, all of the costs associated with her travel and any other unauthorized spendings, you know, they just simply refuse to provide that information. That's unlawful. You can't do that, especially in her position and especially don't um, be the person that's precipitating that particular blockage of that information. So that's really, really serious. That obstruction charge corruption in general. That's a huge one. Allegations of using her position for personal gain, possibly involving kickbacks or bribes, you know, misuse of public funds. You know, she's been accused of spending taxpayer money for personal gain or improper use. This overtime, um, unauthorized and likely illegal overtime for her police detail where these people are making thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, really hundreds and of thousands of dollars in a period of one or two years um, for just being her personal, you know, police detail. It's simply unwarranted. And she's not the president, um, ma'am. You don't really need three police cars following you or three police detail SUVs, et cetera, whatever you want to call them, Tahoes or whatever they are, you know, servicing you in such a small city, especially with people needing those police officers, you know, to, you know, do what they do to protect the public at large. Then there's the co-mingling of funds. It appears that when she traveled, um, to Washington, D.C. for the mayor's convention. She traveled as a mayor, but I believe the funds were um, taken from, you know, Thornton Township, where she's not a mayor, but a supervisor. Um, there's allegations of mixed funds between, you know, the two, the village of Dalton and Thornton Township. Um, she's, she's basically using funds from one entity to cover expenses or deficits for the other, and that's illegal and is unethical. And then there's that issue, you know, retaliation against employees who, you know, came forward with information, even this assault that happened in Vegas. The list is the list is long, right? It's protracted, it goes on and on. Um, so how does Tiffany's situation stack up against other mayors? who have faced similar charges, right? So let's take a look at a few high profile cases like Kwame Kilpatrick, Ray Nagin, Larry Langford. Now those were powerful figures who thought 
they could beat the system. Spoiler alert, they couldn't. So when we look at the numbers, the probability of conviction starts to take shape. And out of these mayors, nearly all of them ended up convicted when they face you know, the strong evidence and under federal investigation similar to her. So let's just take a deeper dive into other mayors and do a comparison. So Kwame Kilpatrick, although Trump did get him off and pardon him before he left office, he was originally convicted of racketeering, bribery and fraud and sentenced to somewhere around 27, 28 years. Guys, that is a lifetime. Then there's Ray Nagan of New Orleans. He was convicted of bribery, fraud, and money laundering and sentenced to 10 years in prison. Larry Langford from Birmingham. He was convicted of bribery, money laundering, and fraud and sentenced to 15 years. Now, those are just a few of um, mayors that we can compare similar allegations um, to Tiffany Hinyard. But guys, don't forget, you know, in this deep dive, we will be remiss not to include those mayors who I personally feel escaped conviction. Basically, you know, got a slap on the wrist like Sharp James of Newark, New Jersey, um, Buddy Sinceri of Providence, Rhode Island, Bill Campbell of Atlanta, Georgia, and the list goes on and on. So, you know, there's that remote possibility that, you know, she could get a slap on the wrist. I doubt it, but the um, remote chance is there. Um, Marion Barry, that's an old case out of Washington, D.C. Now, he was convicted of drug charges, but despite multiple corruption allegations, he avoided conviction on those charges. And then guys, he even returned to office. So I guess guys, what I'm saying is just remember that there's just that remote chance that she will get a jury that can somehow relate to her plight, right? And maybe they favor her for some reason. Maybe they favor her because she's a Democrat. Maybe they favor her because she's a woman, African-American. Who knows? But don't just throw caution to the wind. Keep these things in mind moving forward because all of these factors will impact the outcome of what the jury, um, their final determination and if she is found guilty or not guilty. And of course, there's the laws that the judge will hand down for them to follow in making this determination. But People are human, guys. These are emotional beings. These jurors are not attorneys, right? They're not judges. And they're driven largely by their emotions. I've seen it happen many times. So I'm not saying that it's final, that yes, it's going to be an emotional determination. But I'm saying keep that in mind because it's something to think about. Rather, it's embezzlement, fraud, or corruption. The consequences are clear no one is above the law and the stakes couldn't be higher for those who abuse their power. And as it relates to female mayors or politicians who were convicted um, or charged with crimes, they were typically crimes of financial misdeeds, such as like theft, embezzlement and fraud, misuse of public funds, not so much hardcore corruption charges you know like some of the things that tiffany is being accused of is kind of hardcore like valeria stubbs which is a former trustee she alleged that she had a confrontation with tiffany hinyard and you know shortly after that her home was like shot up guys like sprayed like her house was shot up cars that were parked in front of her house um, were shot up. And so she basically, I'm going to say she implied, but she really didn't imply. She straight up said to um, the news. Yes, yeah, she made a public statement that she believed that the confrontation that she had with Tiffany Hinyard was strategically tied to her home being, you know, shot up, sprayed, whatever you want. 
to call it so. Those are really serious, hardcore allegations and quite different from what most female mayors have been um, indicted or convicted of. But what does this mean for Miss Tiffany Hinyard, AKA the super mayor and the people's supervisor? Well, with the Fed's track record and the historical precedents, we've seen, you know, her chances of escaping unscathed are slim. This is a story that's far from over, guys, and it's developing fast. So for more on this developing story and to stay on top of the latest updates and in-depth analysis, of the story of Tiffany Hinyard, the worst mayor in America, make sure that you tune in to Southern Confidential because we'll be digging deep into every angle of this case and bringing you the facts, the context, and the truth as it unfolds. And so you don't want to miss it. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and don't forget to hit that little notification bell so whenever I post, you'll be notified. So as always, thank you for tuning in to Southern Confidential, and I'll see you next time.